Well, we have a joyous opportunity this morning, if the elders want to come up and join me at the front, to baptize uh, our newest covenant young man, John and Kylie and Micah Mosby are going to come up front here, and uh, we are going to uh, baptize Micah, who is chilling. Hope he enjoyed the sermon. (laughs) Praise God. We're very excited for this family we've gotten to know and love over the last uh, many months. They were members at Agros, of course, and part of the group that came over and began worshiping with us regularly in September, became members in October, and we were delighted that in God's providence they were expecting a child and uh, preparing to raise that child in the covenant of God's grace, and now with his safe birth, uh, we are uh, able to receive him now as a member of the church through baptism. The Word of God says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. Dear congregation of the Lord Jesus Christ, what the Lord has revealed to us in His Word about holy baptism can be summarized in this way. First, baptism teaches us that we and our children are conceived and born in sin. This means that we are by nature children of wrath, and for that reason cannot be members of Christ's kingdom unless we are born again. Baptism, whether by immersion or sprinkling, teaches that sin has made us so impure that we must undergo a cleansing which only God can accomplish. By this, we are admonished to detest ourselves, to humble ourselves before God, and to turn to Him for our cleansing and salvation. Second, baptism signifies and seals to us the washing away of our sins through Jesus Christ. For this reason, we are baptized into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When we are baptized into the name of the Father, God the Father testifies and seals to us that He makes an eternal covenant of grace with us and adopts us as His children and heirs. Therefore, He promises to provide us with everything good and protect us from all evil and turn it to our profit. When we're baptized into the name of the Son, the Son of God seals to us that He washes us in His blood from all our sins. Christ unites us to Himself so that we share in His death and resurrection. Through this union with Christ, we are freed from our sins and accounted as righteous before God. When we are baptized into the name of the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit assures us by this holy sacrament that He will make His home within us and will sanctify us as members of Christ. He will impart to us what we have in Christ, namely the washing away of our sins and the daily renewing of our lives. As a result of His work within us, we shall be finally presented without the stain of sin among the assembly of the elect in life eternal. Third, the covenant of grace contains both promises and obligations. And having considered the promises, we now consider the obligations. Through baptism, God calls us and places us under obligation to live in new obedience to Him. This means that we must cling to this one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We must trust in Him and love Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We must renounce the sinful way of life. We must put to death our old nature and show by our lives that we belong to God. If we through weakness should fall into sin, we must not despair of God's mercy, nor use our weakness as an excuse to keep sinning. Baptism is a seal and totally reliable witness that we have an eternal covenant with God. Our children should not be excluded from baptism because of their inability to understand its meaning. Just as without their knowledge they share in Adam's condemnation, so are they without their knowledge received to grace in Christ. God's gracious attitude toward us and our children is revealed in what He said to Abraham, the father of all believers, when He said, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout your generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. The Apostle Peter also testifies to this with these words. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to Himself. Therefore God formerly commanded that children be circumcised as a seal of the covenant and of the righteousness that comes by faith. Christ also recognized that children are members of the covenant people when He embraced them, laid hands on them, and blessed them. And since baptism has replaced circumcision as the sign and seal of the covenant, our children should be baptized as heirs of God's kingdom and of His covenant, which is what we do today. And then John and Kylie, as our children grow up, Their parents are responsible for teaching them the meaning of baptism. 
And so it's important that you be diligent in that. To the congregation, as solemn vows are about to be made before you and baptism is to be administered, you who are baptized will do well to take this occasion to reflect on your own baptism. Christ has put his name and claim on you. He calls you to be repentant for your sins against your covenant God, to confess your faith before men, and to live in newness of life to God who sealed his covenant with you by the blood of his own Son. Now to John and Kylie. Beloved in Christ the Lord, as you have heard, baptism is given to us by God to seal his covenant to us and to our children. And we must therefore use the sacrament for the purpose that God has intended and not out of superstition or mere custom. And so that it may be clear that you're doing what God commands, we want you to answer the following question sincerely before us all. Do you acknowledge that although our children are conceived and born in sin and therefore are subject to condemnation, they are nevertheless holy in Christ by virtue of the covenant of grace and as children of the covenant are to be baptized? Praise God. Do you promise to teach diligently to Micah the principles of our holy Christian faith, revealed in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments and summarized in the confession of faith and catechisms of this church? We do. Praise God. Do you promise to pray regularly with and for Micah? And assi- <laughs> good, good. And to set an example of piety and godliness before him? We do. Praise God. And finally, do you promise to endeavor by all the means that God has appointed to bring up Micah in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, encouraging him to appropriate for himself the blessings and to fulfill the obligations of the covenant? We do. Praise God. Let's bow and pray together. Almighty, eternal God, long ago you severely punished an unbelieving and unrepentant world in holy judgment by sending a flood upon it all. But in your great mercy you saved and protected believing Noah and his family You drowned the obstinate Pharaoh and his whole army in the Red Sea. O God, you brought your people Israel through that sea safely on dry ground. In these acts, O Lord, you revealed to us the meaning of baptism and the mercies of your covenant in saving your people who of themselves deserved your condemnation. We pray, O God, that in your infinite mercy you will graciously look upon this, your child, that you will bring him into union with your son Jesus Christ through your Holy Spirit, that he would be buried with Christ into death and be raised with him to walk in newness of life. We pray that he would follow Christ day by day, that he would joyfully bear his cross, that he would cling to Christ in true faith and firm hope and ardent love, that you would comfort this child, O God, in your grace, so that when he leaves this life and its constant struggle against the power of sin, he may appear before the judgment seat of Christ, your Son, without fear. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the one and only God, lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. What do you think? Do you want me? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, little man. And he's wearing a bow tie, so this is, this is an extra special baptism. Micah Joshua Mosby, I now baptize you in the name of the Father. And in the name of the Son, I know. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. (laughs) Praise God. As Micah is baptized into Christ and becomes a member of his visible church, the whole congregation is obligated to love and receive him as a member of the body of Christ, For we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, and therefore are members of one another. Christ claims this child as his own and calls you, the congregation, to receive him in love and commitment. Therefore, you ought to commit yourself before God to assist Micah and his parents in his Christian nurture by your godly example, your prayers, and through encouragement in our most precious faith. Now to John and Kylie, you are beloved in Christ Jesus, and we give thanks to God for this child he's given you, and for your express desire for him to know the Lord and to follow him all his days. Along with the great blessing of the gift of this child have, become, have come responsibilities that you've acknowledged and to which you've solemnly committed yourselves. And I charge you to continue steadfastly in the commitments that you've made today before God and these witnesses, humbly relying upon the grace of God and the diligent use of the means of grace, especially the word of God, the sacraments, and prayer. Amen. Let's bow together once again. Almighty God and merciful Father, we thank you and praise you that you've forgiven us and our children all our sins through the blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. 
You received us through your Holy Spirit as members of your only begotten Son, and so adopted us as your children. You sealed and confirmed this to us by holy baptism. We do earnestly pray through your beloved Son that you would always govern this child by your Holy Spirit. May he be nurtured in the Christian faith and in godliness. May he grow and develop in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that he may see your fatherly goodness and mercy which you've shown to him and to us all. May he live in all righteousness under our only teacher, king, and high priest, Jesus Christ. Give him the courage to fight against and overcome sin, the devil, and his whole dominion. May he forever praise and magnify you and your son, Jesus Christ, together with the Holy Spirit, the one and only true God. Amen. Amen. Many reasons to rejoice and give thanks on this holy day.